Thanks a lot, uh, Robert, for the introduction. So now just try to share my screen. So, okay, you should see now my screen. Do you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Good. Thanks. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, yeah, as Robert says, uh, we are talking about uh, content types that gain the highest engagement rates in internal communications. Um, but before I start with this, I just want to give you a short intro uh, introduction who I am and why am I talking about this. So um, I started in 1985 with consuming my first digital content. That was the, with the Atari 2600. I don't know if some of you uh, still know that there you, you played with a cassette. That uh, was uh, my first contact with digital content. Later, 1988, I started with my first PC <laughs> with a C64. Uh, I, I did some programming there, but uh, of course, I played a bit more than uh, doing programs. But it was also a good time. And 1998, I did I, I programmed my first website, including a shop that was for a winery in southwest Germany. I programmed that uh, for a local winer, uh, winery store, and they had. Uh, They had this website online for 17 years. Yeah, that's really a long time, 17 years. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, that was uh, also a good thing. My first contact with really uh, websites. And in 2005, I did my first intranet at Airbus uh, these days. And that, that was my first contact with the intranet. I, I thought, okay, intranet is, yeah, you have a CMS, uh, you have content, and that's the same as the internet. Uh, but it wasn't. <laughs> it, well, I, I recognized that it's different. And nowadays, 17 years later, it's much more different than it was uh, yeah, before. So... That's why I talk about this shortly. Now I work at Asioso. I'm a founder, and we are a company based in different areas in Germany. So, and our topics that we are working for is employer branding, social intranet, and we are targeting existing and upcoming employees because both are very important, and that's where what we are doing. But that's it from the from the commercial side because what we want to do is. Uh, yeah, want to talk about the question that we were uh, are here for today. That's what gets your internet users more informed and engaged. That's what we want to uh, to find out today. And as this uh, funny uh, doc, um, he's really happy. And let's let's try to get some content that is also making you happy. Creating engaging content for the internet. Uh, yeah, that is such an easy thing. So uh, how can you do that? You just need um, yeah, uh, uh, to enrolling as a content editor or someone like George Lucas for your videos, and then you will have great content for your internet. That's 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 so easy as it as I just uh, mentioned that. But our reality looks often more like this. Yeah, we don't have such uh, genius people that are writing. We have uh, people that are good in their job, but they are not writers, uh, video uh, uh, professionals or whatever. So it's, it's uh, a lot of work to, to get in there. And it's uh, that's what we want to talk about. How can it be easy without having such great people? Yeah, let's start with classical internet content that we all know about. Of course, corporate news. We, have, we had that 20 years ago. <laughs> we have it nowadays as well. We still need it. That's uh, the also core basic uh, content of, for the internet. Yeah, FAQs are all also still stored on the internet. Uh, you find frequently asked questions that you can, can see as an employee. Uh, of course, jobs should be posted in there. It would... Be not good if uh, um, the existing employees don't know about uh, the jobs that you have. Um, events, yeah, that are important are uh, typical uh, intranet content, uh, and of course the menu. That's the image for <laughs> the menu was 20 years ago the most uh, clicked content. I think it's still <laughs> the most clicked content, uh, so that you know what what, what food uh, do we want to get. So don't miss uh, if you have a canteen. Don't miss the menu. The people will not like it. But that was uh, the classical content uh, that is, is um, still needed. Um, yeah, but let's start with some internet statistics. Only 13% of employees use their intranets on a daily basis. That's not a lot. Only 13%. We, we have so much work with it, and only 13% uh, check it daily. But even worse, 31% of them admitted that they have never used their intranet. So, A third doesn't check what you're doing. And that's bad. That's really bad. 
So uh, you do a lot of, uh, uh, you do a good job, but the people don't check. So, uh, and you, you cannot uh, um, transfer any uh, uh, message because they don't read it. 74% of the employee, employees have the feeling they are missing out on company news. So they think that there is still some, con uh, they, they don't get enough information. Sometimes they get better informed on the website than on the internet. That's not a good thing. So they're, they're, they, they want to have more information about uh, the company. And employees um, are 75% more likely to watch a video than read text. That's also something we didn't have that 20 years ago. Video was a really complicated thing. But nowadays, um, um, the, yeah, um, in uh, times of YouTube and TikTok, uh, video is, has, has become very, very important. So what can we do to make the internet good on the content side? That's what, what can we do there? We have something like Halo Home. That's a good basis where we can um, do, uh, uh, um, where we have the perfect basis for the internet, but the content itself needs to be good. So our internet competes with lots of privately used uh, media as Facebook, YouTube, and, and so on. Uh, why does it compete with it? Um, yeah, because uh, the people are used to attractive content. So um, if you write boring, news, if you buy boring content, the people will compare with Facebook and they say, don't go to the internet. It's a waste of time. You don't understand it. It's very boring. You don't go there. And then you miss your targets. Whatever targets you have, you cannot communicate. So how can we use, can we win the attention of our users? Well, they should look like this cat. They're really, uh, oh, there's something happening. I need to be there. It's important. A good way to start is onboarding. Onboarding is a one very, very important thing uh, because you, you come new to a company and uh, you, you know nothing about the company, only what's, what you find on the inter, uh, internet. But um, how can you make the, the people feel welcome? You can send a personalized welcome message from the CEO example when you enter the internet. Then you feel really well, well, uh, welcome. Um, you, you find, of course, on the internet, the company vision and values and mission statements. That's something uh, we talked about the um, a great resignation um, uh, at the panel. And um, this is something that people really want the, to see where's the, the company going to. I want to stay in a company that has a great vision. And of course, you have a lot of good people in the company. It's interesting to, lead, to read their biographies. Also, information on mentorship, leadership development programs, and so on are important. And of course, everything, and we can uh, think have tw 20 more bullet points. What's important on the uh, on the uh, um, um, for during the onboarding phase for let's say for the first six months until you are really in the inside the company. And this information needs to be found on the internet, or at least a link to the information. Uh, why is this important? Only 12% of the employees think that co the company does a good job of onboarding new employees. So let's say in other words, 88% say they are doing not a good job. And that's really a, a worse thing. So um, uh, it, it's good to, to think about this because that uh, makes the people really feeling welcome. Only 29% of new hires feel fully supported and prepared to be excellent in the new role because everybody wants to be good in, in his new job and uh, but the onboarding um, it just doesn't really exist so they don't know what to do they need to ask they think they are going on the nerves of others so uh, they don't feel really good so um, it's it's good to uh, to have this and also to have something positive the happy employees who had an excellent onboarding experience are 2.6 times more likely to be extremely satisfied with the company so if you have a good onboarding, you will have happy people. Happy people will make good work and they will stay for a long time. Um, and of course, what's also a good thing is the internet is immediately perceived as an information hub with valuable content. So from, your, uh, from the side that you are uh, responsible for the internet, you know those people who get to know that the, the onboarding was good, they will stay in the internet and look there quite often. So you, you catch them in, at the beginning with, with uh, good things. Also a good thing is the virtual scavenger hunt. <laughs> I needed to add the, the, the German word uh, Schnitzeljagd because uh, that 
I learned that 30 years ago at school, but I didn't use it afterwards again. So, I, <laughs> but the idea is is good to have is, is some kind of a virtual scavenger hunt when you're on board. So you can find clues on the internet, on individual profiles, FAQ, wiki pages, forum, wherever that you need to find as a new employee. Then you find some information, and then with it, this information you get a new hint where to go. And um, some clues lead to people or teams. So, um, and they give you additional hints. So you need to talk to them. You're new, you get in touch with people and uh, that lead you to, 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 the, to the company to, good, uh, to receive good information. And that's really valuable. So what are the advantages? Yeah, new starters build connections in a right, quite short time. Um, yeah, they learn uh, more about their peers and uh, they uh, will, um, familiarize with themselves with the internet and the important tools because the, you you lead them through the this scavenger hunt through the uh, correct content they need to know. And games make fun, and fun is always a good start in a company. So you, you you go home and say, "Oh, it was a funny day," and I learned a lot. It's a good company. <clears throat> Yeah, introduction of people is also something that is, is, is working good. What can we do? Welcome, John, to our team, right? That on the internet or on the team side, um, what is Ali doing? Uh, an insight in a working day of our working student, Julia. Uh, hooray, the following colleagues are now working since 5, 10, 20 years with us. This is content that is... Um, uh, yeah, easy to do because it comes from time to time. You have so genius people in the company, write about them, uh, make them um, uh, known in the company, and that helps you. And why, why, why doesn't this help? People are interested in people. That's why, why this is always working, uh, because you want to know who's that, that person there. Oh, that's interesting what he's doing. I didn't know that. And, oh, that's his, his hobby in the canteen. I will talk to him if we can go fishing uh, together or whatever. They And, and uh, to build connection makes a team uh, uh, very good. And, of course, to show which cool, creative, loyal, interesting colleagues you are all working with, that's an aim you should also have uh, because then you feel correct. Uh, you uh, find the correct uh, company. You're in the correct company because why should you uh, go to another company that doesn't have such cool, creative, and loyal people? <clears throat> special days. Yeah, don't forget the special days. We have so many special days like Valentine's Day, 1st of April, World Chocolate Day, International Women's Day, World Health Day. We have a lot of them. And uh, we should uh, talk, uh, uh, write about those. We should uh, send information about those because it's, it's um, how can we say, it's uh, snackable content. It's content uh, shouldn't be written. You, sh you don't write long articles. Just something that takes uh, three or four lines of of text, uh, a short video, a short image, whatever happens. It's snackable. It's easy to to catch up with. Uh, it's easy to create, um, and it can save life if you don't forget the Valentine's Day. So um, if you if you get remembered in the company, you still have time when you go home to buy some flowers for your for at home, and uh, yeah. And the good thing is it's easy to reuse. You write it once and the Valentine's Day comes next year again. So uh, you write something, you change the image, for example, and the word chocolate day is also, also still the same. It's a bit fun, fun content and the people uh, like it. And there are, you find on the internet um, a lot of lists with hundreds of special days and some of them will fit to your industry. That's then then uh, perfect, uh, like the the day of design or or whatever. Then you write about something. This if you are a, a company like Adobe or uh, something that design is uh, very important for you. So if we think about reuse, we all know uh, this Happy New Year. So we celebrate the end of the year and then uh, the upcoming next year. And uh, what is what is coming um, in in the beginning of the next year? Yeah, diet, food, and fitness content. We find this on the internet in every magazine all the time. And uh, that's that's typical. We, we find that all the time. And that's called evergreen content. Because this is, can be used every in every January. We can write, oh, I think it's good to, to make a diet or to, to think about health. And uh, that's, that's working on the internet. Why not using something like this on the internet? And evergreen content on the internet could be, um, yeah, 10 years ago, we founded our subsidiary in Australia. 
Um, and five years later, we write again that we uh, 15 years ago, uh, we have founded the subsidiary in Australia. Yeah, 20 years ago, we've sold our bestseller for the first time. To remember the people that the, the 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 bestseller product that we have has been started 20 years ago, and that's something to celebrate. And five years or, or uh, later, we can celebrate it again. Um, or article about health at work. This you can really do uh, more often. Also at in January, right? It's every the people will like it because they have this issue, and um, so you don't need to, to 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 write it again. Just to rewrite it or how to define and achieve goals. We will work better if we have uh, if we follow goals, and we all know, um, yeah, smart goals is good, but it's it's really hard to really define a smart goal. And I think it's uh, we can quite often um, um, help ourselves in, 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 in with articles that again um, help us in in uh, um, defining and achieving goals. And I think you will know about many more timeless articles that you have that you can just reuse. Um, every year, every five years, whatever, just you need to make your, your content plan that you don't forget to publish it again. What are the advantages? Yeah, it's little effort. Once you have produced it, then you just need to change an image, change one or two uh, lines of text, and then you um, um, republish it. Yeah, for existing colleagues, uh, they get a refresh. For them, it's good. Oh, I forgot. Oh, it's good to know. Now it's the day again, and uh, let's... Uh, uh, read the health at work. New colleagues get the information. That's also something. It's difficult. You wrote a lot of interesting stuff on the internet, but it's gone. <laughs> but if it's important, just raise it again after some time. And you have more content on the internet. It depends on how big your internal communication is. Sometimes it's really hard to catch up with good content because co writing content makes a lot of work. And if you can reuse it, you can uh, you will have more more content. The people see, oh, it's good to check the internet internet because there you find often um, often news, not only the news that are published on the internet. One more reason why content needs to be interesting. Yeah, many organizations don't have standard internet access for all employees. Yeah, we uh, we know that because some companies have bus drivers, gardeners, construction workers, and whatever, and they don't have any computer access. For them, it's it's difficult. Uh, but they can, of course, with with a, a Halo, they can use the private smartphones and the app to access the internet content. But why should they do that? Why should they do that? It's my private phone. <laughs> why should I go into the internet? Um, yeah. They will do it when the internet content is interesting because you compete with Facebook, with Instagram, with TikTok. And if your internet is boring, why should I spend uh, uh, my private time, for example, with boring content? So if it's interesting, the people will, will do it. They need, they need a trigger. They need good things here. And when is it interesting? When we uh, create emotions. Um, Imagine you're a city administration and you have also um, uh, a, a gardening as, um, uh, as as a part of it. So um, you can have hundreds uh, uh, hundreds of employees and they, some of them might never ha have seen the gardening uh, department they are, because that's uh, three kilometers away. Um, but it would be so so nice if in the uh, in the spring they will just um, send some photos on the internet. Look what we have done here in the streets. Look here, new flowers uh, um, um, here uh, here again, and that makes people happy because they know this is something that we as a city administration do. And every time they drive uh, by, they will see that has been uh, done somebody from my organization. That makes you proud. That makes you happy. Um, or the monthly best rubbish from the recycling center. <laughs> That's something that could also be a lot of fun to see what people throw away. But what interesting things and somebody that uh, that that collects this and makes photos and puts that on a regular basis on the internet to see what's going on. The people are talking about this. Or <laughs> showing that a cat family has been rescued on the company's premises. You know, cat content is always working, <laughs> but that's not what I wanted to say. But uh, if something is going on um, uh, in the company, if it's if it's not standard, just publish it. The people will like it. They like stories. It's storytelling, and it can be that easy. You don't need to write long stories. It's the image that does it, and uh, uh, nearly everybody has a smartphone. 
What are the advantages? Yeah, bringing fun and happiness to the people. Um, you, um, the identification with the company will, will raise. Um, you get news about what's going on in, in parts of the company because you don't know what's going on in the gardening. You've never been there. Or you might, uh, in a big company, you might not have known that the company has a gardening. Um, and people start talking about this in private life. The example of the best rubbish is something that you talk in the uh, Saturday evening with your, with your friends and say, look, do you know what we have found in our company? We have found this and that. And then they are talking about this. And you're only talking about your company if you really like it, if you love it. So the content helps you um, in uh, making the people happier and uh, longer to stay. On the other side, his friend might say, oh, you're working for a cool company. I want to apply for this uh, uh, for this company as well. So that could happen. That's also what um, Halo now has, this uh, show the content that we have, uh, also interesting content that they have in our company, what a good company we are nowadays. No. User-generated content is also something very, very important, not only on the internet. When Web 2.0 started, I think that was in 2010 uh, around, when uh, they said, oh, it's not only um, um, publishing from uh, from the companies to the user, the, the users uh, generate their own content. What is user-generated content uh, internally? That's yeah, blog posts, uh, comments, likes that uh, all the employees can, can do. And uh, with the user generated content, the internet gets from a top down only communication to the bottom up communication. So we have both, and both makes makes it makes it better because the people are nearby you. They say, "Oh, I can can uh, also um, give some uh, information, show that I'm good, that I'm interested in something." Um, and yeah, why should users contribute? Yeah, they can show themselves as topic experts by writing a comment or a whole article. So the, the, the bigger a company is, the, the, the more you don't know other colleagues. If you have 20,000 employees, you might know 100. Um, 200 you know by name, but the rest you have never heard about. But if you see a comment in, in a specific topic that you're interested in, you might start to get in contact with that person because this person is interesting for you. And then, then you talk to, to that person. And also it's an emotional trigger for the posters because who's liking my post, who's writing a comment. That's the same on Facebook, Instagram, and co. If you, if you write something, you want to see who is, um, who is uh, dealing with you there. Of course, uh, uh, we have a CEO talk. That's important. The CEO talk would be something um, um, regular information about important news that, that happen or will happen. Um, their formats could be video, podcasts, and or text, because if you produce it, you can do it um, with all of those uh, formats. You can just, um, um, yeah, for video, you can just take the audio and the text can be uh, uh, re rewritten. And the advantages is you have a regular high level information. Um, the colleagues feel more informed and more involved because you get it monthly or two monthly. Um, and there is no need for a video studio. The setup can be very easy with low costs. Of course, you can have a video studio, but you, in fact, you just need your smartphone to, to be able to produce that content. Also, similar to this could be a project, product, and whatever talks. Because you can talk about new clients, projects, products, employees that you have. And uh, then you have a talk uh, with the project manager, with the product manager, engineer, with a client, and also um, they create videos, podcasts, and or text the same way. And here also the employees get more insights about the company, about what's happening in detail. Which product do we have? And what are we doing there? And why did we do that? Yeah, interactive content is something that really um, um, helps you. We have a soccer betting game, as we have also uh, inside uh, Halo Home. Uh, a digital advent calendar could be something, a scavenger hunt, as I mentioned, at the, on the onboarding. These could be things where you need to, really need to do something, where you need to interact with. And uh, yeah, and the, the people get engaged because they need to do something. They need to come there. They need to come there. And you're activating the users. <clears throat> yeah. The creation of content is a lot of work. Let's reuse it, but in another way. Um, we can also think about, um, um, on the one side, we have external uh, content, 
and we can reuse the content that we publish on social media on the in the internet uh, we could also publish this on the internet like case studies important news events jobs whatever um but on the other side we could do it the same way around if we produce good content for the internet let's cut the ceo product and project talk so that the internal stuff is away but reuse it um, um on our own media channels like like facebook linkedin um uh, website and publish it there again it costs a bit more time of course to 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 cut it but it's it's easy uh, win um uh, because you don't need to create it from the from the start and to get an idea about good content takes again a lot of time yeah the good the bad and the ugly um um if yeah, you might know this uh, good western movie um yeah if we if we talk about content yeah what content is really good and what one is bad or, or even ugly yeah how can we know if content really works of course we need to measure the performance and uh, measuring the the performance would be uh, yeah we can check the statistics of course we can compare uh, the target performance did we reach uh, what we wanted to reach uh, and we can conduct surveys and ask people, what do you think? Is it good or is it bad? Uh, and we, how can we measure that success? Did we reach our goals? Which goals? Which goals do we have? Do we have goals? We have internet. Uh, I think that's enough. No. <laughs> we need to think about, uh, again, about the goals that we want to reach. And the goals could be activity goals, like logins, likes, and comments. The more you have, uh, the more you know the people um, are doing something on the internet. We're talking about process goals, time-saving, cost reduction, um, what, what brings the intranet. Uh, we're talking about content goals, the number of articles and authors, how much uh, can we have, and also satisfaction goals, relevance, acceptance, uh, does the intranet bring what we wanted uh, to bring. These are uh, goals that you might have. If you don't have, if you started your intranet years ago, just start again and now define your own KPIs uh, to say, okay, well, um, okay, stop. Uh, we just did something, but we didn't know why we did it. But uh, now we'll start to recognize this and to find out. And now our last <laughs> slide, <laughs> Robert, so we are come to the end, a short recap. Uh, yeah, creating content is not an easy thing. Uh, as because we don't have the uh, it's that, that easy um, as we said uh, with we don't have uh, um, writers like uh, Rowling or um, George Lucas uh, for video production but we can do it because we have a lot of content types types available um, that we just discussed about that really help us to write good content emotional content that brings the people back to uh, to the internet that makes it interesting. Um, we can reuse the content also externally and um, talk to the external uh, communication, say, hey, how can we um, reuse both of our um, um, content? And of course, we don't, we shouldn't forget to measure the success uh, because we are not doing it just to write content. We're doing it to, to reach some uh, targets, to reach some goals. And we should always think about this. Yes, that's it then from my side. Uh, thanks a lot. And yeah. Any questions? All right, thank you, Nico. I haven't seen any questions in the chat yet. And I, we have one. I yeah. actually have one question, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, no, yep. go ahead. Okay, um, so first of all, thank you for the insights. Um, the one question that I would have is, um, some of the things that you presented are sort of these snackable fun content things that sort of are fun to produce and fun to digest um in your experience do the more business and product related content things that you produce also benefit from mixing this with the more snackable more fun content so so does it help to just mix these things up and have a combination of content have the fun things and then have the more serious content also benefit from this? Um, yes, I think so. So um, if uh, there, there, there are two, two ways, you could 
uh, of course, you internet is not only fun. <laughs> so because yes. you need to, uh, it's a production. Um, exactly. It's for production. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you will not go into production uh, usage if nobody goes there. Yeah. So the, the fun helps in getting the people in there. Mm -hmm. So you have um, 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 more, more people um, in there and using the intranet as it is uh, meant. And then um, you uh, the, the real production, Proactive content about um, some 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 information that you publish that everybody should should know about, like like the, the COVID nineteen uh, mm -hmm. that we just had the, here. You can find everything how you need to behave when we have uh, COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's also not productive, but it's needed content. But everybody should need uh, to should read. So that if you if you get um, in the internet on a daily or a second daily uh, basis, then you uh, also catch up with that content and read it and get the information. So it, it will help um, mm -hmm. together. And sometimes that's not easy to, to mix it, um, to have productive content that makes fun. <laughs> to yes. that, that's hard. <laughs> that, that's, that's hard because that it's, it's often um, uh, difficult enough if, uh, because the, uh, the productive content, you all, uh, often have experts that uh, know about the content, but they're mm -hmm. expert in, in the matter of the, uh, um, the topic, but not in, uh, in writing and in uh, in showing something so you uh, to to make this um, really entertaining um you you need someone that really helps those people um to to make it more fun sometimes it's a good image a funny image mm -hmm. helps something to uh, as an intro to say oh that's interesting that looks good and then i get into uh, have a, a good brief um introduction that brings me to uh, to this production content helps me to read whatever it needs to be uh, to be read Mm -hmm. As long as it's not over-engineered, I guess. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. There is one more question. How do you measure impact of content that employees interact with? I think maybe, Nico, can you say it in a short uh, couple of uh, words? Because we are actually done with the masterclass for now, and we will go back to um, the... Yeah. The, the, the question was how I measure content yeah. um, um, uh, that we interact with, or or uh, I how, didn't. How do you measure uh, how do you measure impact of content that employees interact with? Okay, the yeah, the, the, the good question. Uh, the the first uh, easy way to measure it is that you see, okay, the. Uh, the people read it a lot, they comment it a lot, and they like it a lot. So you see, uh, there, there's an interaction. Um, if the impact at at uh, at the end um, helps and the people are doing what you uh, want them to do, that's something that you might um, um, only get out afterwards um, with a survey, for example. It, it, it depends because it, we just can measure is the content read and interacted. If you reach the goal, we need to to go with a, a survey. I think afterwards. Mm 